So then we can finally talk a little bit more about network. Right, now network, we've already used the very definition of what net means, everything added together, in order to find the network, right? So that is, we can take the work done by the applied force, plus the work done by the frictional force, plus the work done by gravity, plus, and if there are other forces doing work, it's usually unlikely, it's usually these three, um, then uh, you, we'll just add them along, right? We'll add everything that does the work. Okay, so that's the one way that we can find the network. The other thing is we said that the work done by applied force is equal to that applied force times the change in x times the cos theta, for example, right? So the work done net is actually going to be the work done by the net force. So if we can find the net force, we can use that net force in order to find the network, right? So W net is going to be F net change in X cos theta, where again, this theta is the angle between the change in X and the F net. And then, lastly, the other way in which we can find the network done is through the work energy theorem. So the work energy theorem tells us that the network done on an object is equal to its change in kinetic energy. And then what this means is because these things are all equal to network, we can equate them to each other. So for example, a equation that you'll find yourself using over and over again is that the WA plus WF plus WG is equal to the change in EK, right? And that's what you get if you go and combine these two things and make them equal to each other because they are both in fact equal to network. So now it must be equal to each other. Okay, so that's how we can find network, right? Um, and this is going to be very important because you've got to go and choose from the information that you have what's going to be uh, the most appropriate for you to do. Now very frequently we get a question and then they tell us use energy principles. And you're like, yeah, can you be more specific? Well, here's the specifics, right? So when we say use energy principles and there's no friction or no applied force, in other words, we're in a closed system, they're trying to tell you, please use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. Or if they tell you there is friction or there is an applied force, then it's an open system. And in that instance there, that is when you use the work energy theorem. This that we just saw, W net is equal to change in EK. Okay, so next up, as I promised, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the work done by gravity. Um, and as I said a little bit earlier, I might have done something that you might have found a bit strange. Um, but here, what I want to show you is that there are actually three ways in which you can calculate the work done by gravity. Okay, now the first one we've already seen it's that this amazing formula, w, w equals F change in X cos theta, is always true, right? As long as uh, everything's substituted incorrectly and theta is the angle between the force and the displacement, right? So you can use this, um, but most people don't find it that easy to find this theta, right? So the other way you can do it is to go find FG parallel. So you can use FG parallel, multiply that by the change in X, and then use cos of theta, but then be very careful. Theta is the angle between the force and the displacement, right? So if FG parallel is your force, right, that is usually either going to be in the direction of the displacement for something that's going down the slope, right, or in the opposite direction of the displacement for something that is going up the slope. Right? So in this instance, if you do go find FG parallel um, and multiply that by the change in X, well then you've just got to make sure that for theta you either put in zero degrees for something that goes down the slope or 180 degrees for something that's going up the slope. And then the last way in which you can find the work done by gravity is to know that the work done by gravity is the negative of the change in gravitational potential energy, right? Which you can go right, if you like, as negative mg change in h. 
Okay, so this here conceptually is because gravitational potential energy and the work done by gravity are opposite sides of the same coin. Gravitational potential energy is the potential for gravity to do work, right? So when an object is moving downwards and its gravitational potential energy is decreasing, right? That actually just means that potential is being realized. So whatever loss there is in the gravitational potential energy as you go downwards, that becomes the positive work that has actually been done by gravity. Okay, so let's see if we can apply this here. So I'm going to go and calculate the work done on this 50 Newton object. So the 50 Newtons, they've been nice, they've given us Fg. They didn't give us the mass, we don't have to go mg, it's just 50 newtons. Okay, so I'm going to go calculate this work done on gravi ach, by gravity on this object um, using the three flavors that I've shown. Okay, so the first one we said is that it's always just fg change in x cos theta. Okay, so here fg is 50 newtons, great, the change in x is 5, and now if the displacement is up this way and gravity is down this way, then this is a 90 degree angle plus a 30 degree angle and 90 plus 30 is 120. So this is going to be cos of 120. Okay, 50 times 5 times cos of 120 gives us negative 125 joules. Okay, right, then option 2 we said is the one that most of you are probably familiar with and that is to go find Fg parallel, multiply that by the change in x and then use the angle between Fg parallel and change in x. Okay, so here um, because we've got a 30 newtons, so let me just draw this here to make it easy to show what I'm doing. Okay, we know that Fg gets broken up into Fg perp and Fg parallel, where here we have a 90 degree angle and this is going to be 30 degrees, right? So you can see that opposite the um, 30 degrees is Fg parallel, which means that we've got to use sine in order to find Fg parallel because sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, right? So this is then Fg, the 50, times the sine of the 30, times the change in x, which is 5, and then cos of theta, well here, fg parallel is going down the slope, and the displacement is up the slope, so the angle between these two things, fg parallel and the displacement, is 180 degrees. So this is going to be cos of 180. All right, so 50 times sine of 30 times 5 times the cos of 180 gives you an answer of negative 125 joules. Okay, so here I don't want you to be surprised that these two things gave us the same answer. Um, you should in fact be elated. Okay, or not elated, maybe just like, yeah it works, great. Okay, cool. So then the third way I said is if we know the vertical displacement, we can just say that the work done by gravity is the negative of the change in gravitational potential energy, which is going to be negative mg change in h, right? And now we get negative, uh, now mg we know is the same as fg, right? Um, mg, fg equals mg. So where I see mg, I'm just going to put in the fg, which is the 50, right? And then the change in h here is 2.5 meters and it's going up, so it's positive 2.5, right? And then let's see, negative 50 times the 2.5 gives us negative 125 joules. Fantastic, right. So these two methods, one and two, they are interchangeable. You can decide which one you prefer, which one you're more comfortable with and use that one. Method number three is very useful when we have the vertical displacement but we do not know what the angle of the incline is um, or we don't know um, what the horizontal displacement was, well not horizontal, but the displacement up the slope was or something like that. So sometimes the only thing you really have is the vertical displacement. And in that instance there, you can use this in order to find the work done by gravity 
um, rather than, well, being lost. So um, some of you might use the alternative WNC equals change in EP um, plus uh, change in uh, EK, right? Um, you can do it that way if you uh, prefer to use that formula if all you know is the, the vertical displacement, but you can also use this fact that the work done by gravity is the negative change in EP. Okay, so then it is now your turn to pause the video and try this following example. Okay, let's have a look at this. So we've got the two kilogram object and it slides down a slop aka a slope, um, A to B and loses vertical height of 2 meters. It then slides up a slope, C to D, a distance of 4 meters along the slope. Find the work done by the gravity, or can we just say gravity, um, for A to B as well as for C to D. Okay, so for A to B here, um, we see that the only thing we have is the vertical displacement. We don't actually know how long it went uh, along the slope and we can't use the vertical displacement to find um, how long it went along the slope because we don't have the angle, right? So here we're stuck and we'll have to go WG is equal to negative change in EP, which is then negative MG change in H, right? That's going to be negative times the mass 3 times the 9.8 and then here the change in 8 is negative 2, right? And I'm using the negative 2 because uh, if I've got 9.8 as uh, being positive, um, oh, sorry, I'm using the negative 2 because as we go down, um, our h is decreasing. So our hf minus hi would give us a negative number. So negative 3 times 9.8 times negative 2 gives us 58,8 joules. Okay. And now we ask ourselves, well, does this make sense that gravity has done positive work as this thing has slid down the slope? And the answer is yes, because positive work means it was helping. And if gravity isn't helping things go down the slope, well, then I don't know what does. Okay, so here for A to B, it makes perfect sense that we've got the positive work done by gravity there. Then for C to D, we've got to go figure out, well, what was the work done by gravity there? Okay, so for this one here, I'm going to find the component of gravity um, that was going down the slope, right? So if G is going down, um, we know that uh, we get a triangle looking like this, where this is FG perpendicular, this is FG parallel, which means this here is the 20 degree angle, which is opposite FG parallel, so we're going to use sine, right? So if we go WG equals FG parallel, change in x cos of theta, then now our fg parallel is going to be the 3 times 9.8, that's fg. Then we've got to find the parallel component, so we've got to go times the sine of the 20, right, times the displacement, which was 4, and then cos of theta. Now remember, theta is the angle between the force and the displacement. fg parallel is going down that way, and the displacement is up that way, that's a 180 degree angle. Um, and so this is then times cos of 180. Okay, then let's say 3 times 9.8 times sun of 20 times 4 times cos 180. And I get here an answer of negative 40,22 joules. Okay, so again, does this make sense? Well, yes it does, because as this object is going up the slope, gravity is definitely hindering that object, making it harder for it to go in the direction that it is going, um, and so the negative work done by gravity there makes perfect sense. Okay, and then the last thing to talk about is power, right? So power is defined as the rate at which work is done, right? So how fast work is being done. Now here, um, this uh, formula that we get from the definition has work there in the numerator. And to find the work, well, we've got lots and lots and lots and lots of ways of doing it. Um, as we've seen now with network and friction and applied and whatever. Um, but we've spoken extensively about work. So for power, all you have to do is go divide it by the change in time. How long it's taking in order for this work to be done. Um, and so power, if you can find work, um, then you'll usually um, be able to find power, quite straightforward. And then here we've got this formula here as well, P equals FV, 
Now for this, V would be the constant velocity of the object, and then F is just the force acting. So if F is the net force, then you'll find the net power. If F is the applied force, then you'll find the, the power of the applied force. Um, and just note that you would have to um, take into account your positives and negatives for vectors there. Okay. Right, so that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for joining me um, for today's session. Um, the most important thing you can do after this is to go practice, practice, practice until you can't get it wrong. That's all from me. Good luck.